Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. I'm done with all the wiring on the south wall. Today, I'm gonna to get all of this insulation back into the wall and I'm gonna move everything from this side of the room to this side of the room. Yeah, we have some fairly difficult insulating to do here. I guess we'll just figure them out as we go. What you don't want to do is leave air gaps. And if I was just going to push insulation into here, I'd have an air gap at the top and bottom of these cleats here. And you don't want to just push it in and leave a big air gap behind this wire. You want to slice the insulation so it goes around the wire. And in this case, you split the insulation and tuck it in behind and have the wire right in the middle of the insulation. And this bay, I believe, is narrower than a standard bay. So the insulation has to be cut the full length which is not easy either. And as for the box, all of these boxes, I got these extra deep boxes by mistake, and there's only a half inch of space behind them. So what I'm gonna do is spray foam behind all these boxes right away, and then I'll trim that. And then once I go to do the wiring, I'm going to put some foam on the inside as well. That should solve that problem. I'll just foam the inside, like half of it, and that'll give us some pretty decent insulation there. Okay, well, let's get going. We'll cut this narrower to start with and then worry about all this other stuff. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way and we'll get going. Let me show you what I'm doing before I get too far ahead of myself. What I did was peel the paper back, just folded it over. Then I put my straight edge on top of the paper and I measured out 13 and a half inches from the edge over to the edge here, which is what the opening's gonna be. That way I'll have the paper to fold onto the studs here to staple it in place and I won't have to tape that edge and it just makes for a nice clean installation and then I take a steak knife and you can plunge it right through this stuff and just use a sawing motion and cut this stuff I'm on a floor this is the old floor from the shed this is going to get covered later so I can cut right on the floor. So once I get this cut, 
I'll notch it out for the box and then we'll do some cutting on the other side for these two cleats. Okay, so we're going to go 9 and 12 and an 8. And 2 and 3 eighths.
Okay. Now. Goes behind that. And we already have a split in. So it fits right over the cord there. One down, nine to go. I thought this one was going to be super easy because all it has is this blocking and a wire going straight across. But we have cleating on the side. I'm going to have to notch for that. Right here, I'll just fill that in with some loose fiberglass in those two spots. I mean, it's not hard, but it's not as easy as I thought it would be. I got a little ahead of myself and got that one in and I'm working on the next one on um, these partial ones like this this is ten and three quarters inch wide I'm using these cutoffs and again I peeled back the paper measured from here to here at ten and three quarters I cut my piece off now I'll fold this back and I'll measure 11 and 3 quarters, which will give me an inch of paper hanging over. That way I'll have something to staple onto the wall there. And on this one, all I need is a split on the back for that wire. And as you're putting it in, you open it up and then push it in. I'll show you that. Let me get this cut and we'll put this one in. show you what I'm doing. First I measured for the box, that box right there, and then cut that piece out which is this. Then I sliced down but not all the way to the paper and took out these bottom and top parts. It happened to be 20 inches up to the top of this. Then I just split this one in half and it goes around the wires nice and tight and then put this one into the bottom now i'm going to split this part all the way up to here just pull this apart and then tuck this back part behind the wire all the way down to the bottom and jiggle it around a little bit until it's in there tight 
and we'll have a super tight fit. Okay, this cutout is going to be for a communications box, so it's going to be a bit different than the other boxes. And this knife, it's just a steak knife, but I sharpen it every couple cuts, so it's very sharp. And on this one, I'll be using all of the pieces. I'm going to cut the back again. And all of the pieces are going back into it. To 23 inches and I don't want to saw all the way down through there and I want about two and three eighths Knife needs sharpening. This one goes in the bottom. And this one goes in the top. Now, I'll take my outlet cut out and poke it down the middle, put a slice in it, and then that goes in here, and the wire goes through that slice. Okay, I gotta run to town real quick. I have half of the bats that I plan on getting in today in, five out of 10. Like I said, I'm gonna wind up with this one here. 
it looks like this one right here is going to be the most interesting. It's going to be roughly the same as this one with the outlet, but on the top half, we got to go behind this cleating for the mini split and notch out for this cleat up here. So that one will be pretty interesting. This I'm just going to cut square, so that's not going to be too difficult. And then when you get over here, it's not easy, but it's the same as what we've been doing. So let me go get my business taken care of and we'll get right back at this. All right, I went to town. It started raining really hard on the way to town. It's just drizzling now, but it got really dark out. So when I got back in here, it was too dark for the camera, but I could see what I was doing. So I got another bat in and then I went and got the light so you could see what's going on. All right, this next one, I'm going to use two pieces again because it's got stuff going on at the bottom and at the top. I could do it with one piece, but seeing how I got the two pieces, we'll do it that way. So we'll start with this bottom one. And what we're going to do is just like the other ones, I'm going to cut out for the box and then I'm going to cut out a chunk above and below it. And what I'm going to do on this one is just split the bat for this one here and I'll tuck it behind down here. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. Okay, this is basically the same as the other ones right here. We got a cutout for the box and I took material out above and below the box. And then down here for this wire, I'm gonna split this and tuck it behind it. And then for the communication wire, I have a slit and I'm gonna open that up like a mouth and then close it back down on it. Hopefully you'll be able to see that as I'm putting it in. This thing fell in half when I was lifting it up, so just left it in half. Made it actually a little bit easier. I have my top piece cut. These have reliefs cut on the front face, but it's behind the paper. And then it has another relief cut on the very top. And that's for this, this, and this right here. So I need to slide it up kind of behind there, but it should just fit. And then we'll staple it in place. And then we have a fairly easy one. I got to trim this square and then when I cut out for this, I'll just round the cutout in the fiberglass. And that one should be fairly easy. Let's get this one in place first though. Okay, I got this one cut. We have a split for the electricity, one for the communications. We have a notch for the mini split pass through, and we have a notch for the cleat up at the top. These are a little bit awkward to put in because you basically have to like fold this in half and open up that mouth. Then you push this next section in and open it up again and then close it and then you can push the rest of it in. It's not that awkward, but it's a bit awkward. Now 
Not sure if you'll be able to see that or not, but it's raining pretty hard out there. All right, back to it. We're on the second from last one here. It's already getting really late, so I gotta hurry this up. Same as the other ones. The box goes here. All this stuff was peeled out and it's in there. This one has a communication outlet. So we put the stuff that was taken out for the box and put it back in the box from behind. It's got the slits, communications and power and a notch up at the top for the cleat right there. Let's get this one in and we're nearly done. It's getting really late. I got to hurry this up. All right, that's it. Got the last one in. This one right here, like I said before, they're going to be putting in the fiber optic, which will come in right around here somewhere. And then they're going to wire that up into this panel right here. And that could happen as early as tomorrow. And when that does happen, I can insulate this bay right here. But this stuff needs to remain open for attaching the addition to and some wiring into the addition. And the next wiring is going to come out the bottom, go over into here, and then up and across. And what is there? There's one circuit here. There's a heater circuit here, another circuit here and here, and then we have the lights. What do we have? The lights, the porch light, well, the room lights, the porch light, and then we have the smoke detector, which is this here. All of that stuff needs to be wired up, which really isn't all that much. This was much harder because I did the pass-through. Pass-throughs right here where this line is. That's the pass-through right there. Did the pass-through and had to cut the hole for the porch light and stuff. Oh, and we have the low voltage line going to the security doorbell, which is going to go right here somewhere. So I guess it is a fair amount of wiring. But a bigger task, I think, is getting rid of all this stuff. I'm going to pack up the vast majority of it. I'm only going to keep here what I need for insulating and wiring. The rest is going to go on the gator and go over into the wood shop. There just isn't any room in here. And I have a rolling cart. I'll put everything that's left on that rolling cart, take out all the shelves, and we'll have this place wired and insulated before you know it. Then we'll be doing drywall again. Oh, and we need to put the ceiling in as well. Fair amount of work, but it shouldn't take more than, I'm guessing, a week and a half to get this bottom area done. At least as far as we're taking it before we start on the addition. So, if you want to see that stuff, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.